You did your job, Tire. You saved me on many a turn. Alright, what's up everyone? Welcome back, welcome back to the channel here. We're about to go on a, uh, whoa, B, B just attacked me. Anyways, we're about to go on a little ride today. A few things we wanted to talk about, a couple of topics. Um, one thing that's exciting, I have my juiced electric smart pump, they call it. We're gonna do a, I've been testing it out. We're gonna do a real world, real world-ish test out out in the uh, wild today. I'm not gonna give myself a flat, obviously, but I am gonna let air out of my tire and then pump it back up, respectively. I'm not gonna go full flat. We're gonna do that. We're also gonna talk about a controller problem I had, and I'll explain what was going on with that. It's kind of some, I started another video, but I got a little bit of movement on that issue. Uh, it'll make sense more when I explain it, but before I release the video on that controller problem, I'm waiting to, to kind of see what happens a little further. But like I said, I'll explain it while we're cruising around. Other than that, uh, let me see what else. Tires, tires. I have the old Innova tire back on here. I started making a little video of me swapping the tires out. I might throw a little bit of footage of that into this video because that something happened with my camera. It didn't really work out well. So I feel like that the footage of me like doing the tire change and all that kind of got messed up. So I figure I'll pepper a little bit of that, um, that other old tire. Wait, do you see how worn it was? So I had to use this. All right, what you see here is a very busted tire, but I, I don't know. If, I'm hoping that I think this is my Tuffy liner in there. And I don't want to puncture this tube. This is a really nice tube. It's like, well, it's a tube that has no patches, no flats. So I don't want to ruin this tube. What I'm thinking, I have this tire. This is the juice tire. And what the heck are these called again? These are called, oh yeah. Uh, five millimeter armor. They're really thick. I can't think of the name of it though. Innova, there we go, Innova tires these are thick you can see the grip difference though like these have a decent this has a decent amount of life left this is obviously shot if I, I i'm not gonna ride one more time with these you know as much as i like those front ones the v-mission speedsters these are a five millimeter thick tire you can just tell these are really thick like they feel good they're robust sidewalls a little less tall also these have a max PSI of 35. Those have a max PSI of 20. I usually go to 26 on those. I might go to 30 on these. But yeah, that's it. Oh, let me show you the back tire that was on there. All right, so this is the tire I just took off. And look at this. This was one part of the tire. That didn't bust through, but you could almost like, the tire is so flimsy in the center. It's starting to bow in. God, you can see how flim this is like paper. It's so flimsy now. So yeah, I feel good. I feel good knowing that I have the, um, I have that other tire as a backup. This tire is shot. This is done. That's going right in the garbage. Wow, so flimsy. This is a great tire though. V-Mission Speedster. You did your job, Tire. You saved me on many a turn. All right, let's start the ride and uh, we'll go from there. Um, we're gonna talk about a few things with the bike. Now, what I wanted to talk about with the controller, I had some issues. First time I ever had some real issues with the juiced bike here. So what happened was a few, maybe a couple weeks ago, I'd be riding and then my bike would, I wouldn't have any power. Total power loss to explain a little bit. There was a wire 
underneath my seat it was one of the uh one of the one of the bolts that holds the seat the seat on was crimping one of the wires that go right to the controller and it was crimping it so hard and squished from one of the bolts it broke through the wire casing and there was live wire touching the metal on the bike and it was causing a short so now now i'm basically waiting to hear back from juiced to see what they say about it and when i when i hear back from them i'll update that video that i just made Then I'll be able to give like a proper conclusion on the issue. Obviously I had the error eight code, I fixed the wire, and in the video that I made that I didn't release, I mentioned that I, I know that I'm out of warranty, but seeing as though it's clearly a manufactured defect, you know, I asked Juice if they would possibly honor the warranty or give me a discount on a controller. I don't think I need a new controller, but I also don't want a compromised one with a crimped wire that had to be fixed. We'll see what happens. Once I get an update there, um, I'll report back. So that's that. So a little bit of a, what's the plan? Say, what's the plan here? I gotta stay focused. All right, so I talked about the wire, the air A code, and I'll tell you, I was so bummed, like, I ride this thing so often, pretty much every day. It was like, uh, I was just wondering, like, man, it's, it really became a part of my life. I was super bummed out that it wasn't gonna work anymore, you know? I was so happy that it got fixed, or that I fixed it, or that I was able to, however you wanna say it. All right, so what's next? And I have to say this, as smooth as those V-Mission Speedster tires are, these Innova tires are a lot, they're faster. They're just, the Innova tires are straight up faster. There's like zero resistance. Granted, you do pay because you don't have that grip, but I, I want a thicker tire and I want a tire that has a higher PSI. <clears throat> I just like having that extra air in there. It makes the bike roll smoother. It's less bouncy. It just feels more stable. A couple people were saying I should maybe get a motorcycle tire. So I'm going to look into that. Maybe there's like a hybrid motorcycle tire that is, uh, it's not a slick style and it's also not the Shinkos, the 244s. Those things are very aggressive for what I need. Exciting. Well, I said it in the opener. We're going to do a review on the Juice Bike Pump. And, you know, for whatever it's worth, spoiler alert, it's awesome. I've been using it all the time on my regular bike. I used it on my... Uh, oh, another exciting thing. My two aunts got a e-bikes. I can't remember what the name was. It's like Ostero or something. I'll put a photo of them up. We're gonna have a little e-bike posse tomorrow for a little bit, so that'll be a fun video. Oh yeah, the pump. So yeah, I use the pump on their bikes. The convenience of it is... But once I show you the video, um, 
you can kind of see some of the features. I'm gonna show you guys, uh, I'm gonna take a photo. I'll do it, I'll do it now. Here, here's a photo of the tires I'm thinking of getting. All right, real quick, I'm gonna grab a sandwich in here. It's gonna be sandwich coffee, then we're gonna go do a review on the pump, and we'll go from there. All right, so we got the sandwich from Mansoor's. It's this awesome chicken sandwich with like a pesto. It's so good, red peppers, delicious. All right, I'm about to eat my sandwich. Before I get into that, I thought I would give a little update here. So something scary kind of happened. Uh, I was having like weird back brake issues. It, it almost felt like the fluid was, uh, the brake fluid needed to be bled or, or added to it. Cause when I would press my back brake, it would seem like my brakes weren't separating from the rotor. Like I would press the brake and then let go, but it was grabbing for a minute longer. This is kind of interesting. I was riding home the other night and I almost hit a possum, or not a possum, it was a groundhog, like flew out on a path and I, I almost destroyed it. I slammed on the brakes and I had this weird grindy sound coming from my back wheel. I'm like, oh my God, what the heck's going on? After investigating the next day, I realized these bolts right here, I had all but two of these bolts left, two of them. So this casing was starting to separate, which was causing my rotor to kind of jet out which was messing up the brakes so thank god i almost hit that the groundhog whatever you want to call it to find out that these bolts were missing thankfully though i was able i'll put the size of these bolts up on now i, I was able to find them at home depot they're like two bucks a pack for two of them but i was able to replace them the same like the next day i found replacement bolts so these bolts popped out i had two left so I'm gonna check these every once in a while. So if I didn't happen to notice these and all, all those bolts came out, like I said, there was only two of them. If those two bolts happened to come out, I don't know what would have happened to my bike. Uh, I was glad that I was able to find that before any major damage happened. So check these bolts, everybody. You never know um, if those are going loose on you. You know, can't hurt. Now we'll grab a coffee and then we'll head over and do the, the pump review. Wow, what a lovely day here. Yep, 
you know, my back brake started squeaking for a couple days after that whole debacle with that hub screws missing and all that other stuff. And I was bummed, so I'm like, man, now I have two squeaky brakes, but the back one stopped. So now it's just back to dealing with the front ones. I'm really curious as to what Juiced is going to do about that controller thing. I understand I'm out of warranty, but it was 100% a manufacturer assembly problem. The way the wire got squished when, uh, under the seat bolt there. I just hope they don't, the only discrepancy that I can see is if they think I did it, but I never took my seat off. I never got a new seat, never had to take the seat off. I'm sure I would have did a video if I ever took the seat off or I would have talked about it. You guys have been with me since day one almost. That's my only fear is that they are going to think I squished it. But I did not. I fixed the squish. I'm a squish fixer. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Left the coffee shop. I'm rolling with the drink while I'm riding this. If I make it without spilling the drink, it was a good idea. If I spill my drink, it was a bad idea. So we'll see. I don't have far to go though. It's gonna go a couple blocks up here and then that is where we will do the test on the pump. For you guys, I've, I've been testing it, but I'll show you how it works. Now there's a display on it. A couple things about the display. I think you can see the display at night. Could you? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a backlight. So you, you, there's a backlight on the display for night. There's a bleeder valve. You can set the, uh, the PSI, there's other settings, tire pressure settings, I'll, I'll show you. Switch gears right now if I had a hand. Do it. <clears throat> 
I don't want to scare this guy and his dog, so I'm going to take my time here. This looks like a good spot. Ready to get the uh, pump test on. We're gonna mess with the back tire. Maybe we'll do the front tire too. Comes in this nice, um, kind of like a, it feels like a leathery pouch. I'm sure it's probably fake leather, but it's all right. What's wrong with that? So here's some of what we get. So you get a, you get a few different nozzle tips with it when i first got this i thought they didn't send me the hose that it works with i'm like man where the hell's the hose they did you push this little button down here and it kind of pops the hose out right here so you have the hose there so you take out the hose put that in And then you uh, screw that onto the nozzle of the, put some air. So a couple things, so that's where you store the hose. You have a little light here, USB-C charging cable. That's where you pop the hose out, give it a little push. And you also have a bleeder valve here. So if you need to let air out, uh, you hit that bleeder valve, it'll let some air out. So you hold this power button. Like so. And then if you press the down button, you see how that cycles car, motorcycle, bicycle, you know, like a sports ball of some kind, then a custom. So what you do is you set it on what you want. Like, you know, I'm going to set it on, there's the bicycle icon. And then after you do that, you can go backwards or forwards to set what pressure you want. I'm going to do 33 pounds. So I'm pressing back, going to 33, which is nice. Also, like I said, this lights up at night so you can see it easy, it's great. Um, we got the battery indicator here. Comes with a plug, no, no wall brick or anything. And then if you wanna turn the light on, you hold this top button point it up and the light comes on. Everything on here is just so useful. The light is useful. The, the lit up display is useful. The bleeder valve is useful. Um, the fact that, and this is where it tells what your, your, uh, your pressure is. So as soon as you hook this up to the tire, your pressure gauge will pop here. Also too, if you, which way is it? Yeah, if you press up on here instead of holding up, like holding up turns the light on. But if you just tap up, it goes from PSI here. I don't know if you can see it. PSI to, to bar, B-A-R, K-P-A. Other units of measurement, um, not familiar with, you know, we, I use the PSI here. And uh, so yeah, we set what we want this to. I told you some of the features. Battery life seems to be good. I, I did quite a few tires before this started uh, blinking on me. Uh, I just love this thing. It's not very loud. I probably will have to dull the sound out a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to hook it up to the tire. We'll use the bleeder valve. We'll let some air out just to test it. And then we'll fill it up. Duh. We're now hooking up the pump. You know, it's all it's snug. You don't have to go crazy with it. You can see I'm at 34 pounds of pressure. 
So what we're gonna do is use the bleeder valve a little bit, let some air out. See how that works, it's great. You can see, as soon as it hits 33, it shuts right down. This thing is amazing. It might be a little bit more than like some of the Amazon ones. My aunt, my aunt has an Amazon one. It doesn't have a bleeder valve. It doesn't have a place to hide the ho to hide the hose. I'm not really sure about some of the other features, to be honest. But I don't know. I think this is worth every penny. It was about 60 bucks with shipping and everything, taxes, right around there. Highly recommend this thing. It does say this hose gets a little warm after the pump, so keep a, keep note of that. So we're gonna remove this now. So that is the juice pump. I think it's awesome. Juice sent me a, uh, a you know, they send you an email after you buy stuff to ask what, what you thought. I give this a two thumbs up. A thumb and then another thumb. I'm holding the camera, so I can't give you two thumbs for real, but know that in my mind, I'm giving another thumbs up. This thing is great, highly recommended, and the color is kind of cool. I like the red. So uh, let's get back on the ride. Hope you like that mini review, and all right, off we go. All right, so that's kind of more or less, that's kind of the end of the ride today. I still have to ride home. I'm gonna meet my buddy Chris. I'm gonna try my hand at skateboarding today. Or should I say try my feet? That was like a dad joke. So I'm not gonna, I don't know, maybe, I don't know how much more chat I'm gonna do. I feel like I've been chatting this whole ride. I'm just gonna whiz back to my house, grab my skateboard, and then uh, that'll be it for the for the video. Appreciate y'all coming along. Yeah, we're gonna do a nice ripper on the ripper on the way home here. No, nope, not that way. Yeah, as you can see, I love the love the bike pump. Juice, you did good on that one. So far, everything that I've gotten from Juice has been you know, the customer service, I guess, is a little bit slow. It's hard to say. I know I have a unique issue going on, so. Like, I'm out of warranty and my bike, I, I'm out of warranty and I was able to fix my bike. So maybe because I'm not stressing, it's, I don't care as much. We'll see though, we'll see. I'm not gonna release the video until I get an update from Juice. I'll give him another week or two and we'll go from there. So you know what was happening, because I, in, a, in a couple of videos ago, I mentioned I had somebody on my, like I was had a passenger and you know, obviously the passenger had to sit way back on the seat and way back on the seat is where that bolt, the rear seat bolt was squishing the wire. And I think when I had a passenger, because that wire was already being squished by the bolt, the rear passenger's like weight was, it, I think it just ended up exacerbating the problem and, you know, which caused the casing on the wire to, to shed or get, uh, what the hell word am I looking for? Shed? Shedded. That doesn't make any sense. It basically just wore away over time. And I think having a rear passenger like was just enough to put that little bit extra weight where that casing uh, split through. But there's a lot of action going on here. Whoa.
Now, somebody that wasn't, uh, you know, I'm not saying I'm Mr. Mechanic and I know everything, but I am a little bit savvy when it comes to fixing things. Maybe more than your average person, just because I, I did it a lot growing up. But if somebody didn't really know how to fix bikes and that happened, I can see that being quite a big deal. Like if they didn't know how to take the seat off, how to look at the controller and... I found that, I found that, uh, that squish wire pretty quick. I tried a couple other little things to fix it and I thought I fixed it. Um, but I'll show you in that, it's all in that video that I made about the wire. Once that comes out, you'll understand. I just don't want to have to, not have to repeat myself, but this way you won't be hearing the same thing twice. So I figure I'll give you a little overview of it and then you can see the video. How many dogs are in there? <laughs> <laughs> 